All right, folks, we're going to call to order our uh, uh, first and only hearing this evening. This is a uh, continued hearing uh, regarding uh, Thea Nursery's appeal of an enforcement letter that was uh, written by the uh, Milton Building Inspector Joseph uh, uh, Prondack. Uh, this case was uh, originally uh, heard on August 23rd, 2016. And it was uh, continued to this evening uh, to uh, allow the board to uh, consider uh, certain uh, legal issues. Um, both parties uh, have filed with us uh, a memoranda of law stating their respective positions, um, for which we thank all the parties. I think they were, they were all uh, uh, really well done. Um, and. In, in case the first session wasn't uh, tape recorded, we certainly weren't televised live. Let me just briefly outline the issues if there's somebody out there. Mr. Rotman, yes, sir. It was taped. Oh, it was taped. Oh, that's terrific. Then, then I don't have to get involved giving a, uh, a, a brief outline of what the case is, is about because the, they'll play that tape together with this tape and it will be cohesive. So uh, with all of that uh, said, let me just uh, do a couple of other uh, preliminary introdu introductions. Uh, uh, my name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals with me this evening. Uh, as we're present at the last hearing, to my immediate right is board member uh, Ted Daber, and to my immediate left is uh, board member uh, uh, Jeffrey Mullen. Uh, the evidence at this um, hearing is closed. I haven't heard any motion from either party to introduce uh, additional evidence, so I, I think it's uh, uh, incumbent on the board to uh, discuss this matter in open session, uh, as we're required to do, um, and to uh, vote on whether to uphold or uh, deny this uh, appeal of uh, the nursery for Mr. Brondack's uh, enforcement letter. So, unless I'm missing something? I don't know. Were yeah. we going to hear any legal argument on the submissions or not? I, I don't think so. No. I think the submissions speak for themselves. I, I think there's no sense in listening to counsel for 15 or 20 minutes uh, reciting uh, uh, what they've already, already provided us with. Mr. Mr. Nye. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthew, on behalf of Mr. Joetti and Mr. Rowe. Um, uh, Mr. Nye, I'm going to have somebody, would you just come up to the microphone here so let's make that. I, I don't intend to give a, a legal argument if it doesn't please the board. Um, just want to make sure that uh, the board is in receipt. I, I know that you said that you had uh, my memorandum. Um, a memorandum from Thayer, which uh, I do not have a copy of. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that there, the email correspondence between Mr. Prondack and uh, Mr. Furs of the planning board was part of the uh, the planning board's record. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's... I'm sorry, this, this yeah, is the only board of appeals record. That given, Mr. Rockman, do you have a copy of that? Uh, so uh, two points were raised. Yes. One is... Well, I'm sorry, you're going to have to come up here, Mr. Rockman, sure. because they... Uh, they won't pick you up. It'll you know, sound like you're out of the February pile and right to the answer. So I'd like to be. Well, <laughs> so wouldn't we all, but I'm not sure about beautiful Baltimore this time. <coughs> right. Um, Maggie Oldfield filed our statement on the day it was due. Yes, sir. With an extra copy to go for Mr. Dunn with the understanding, and she were told by the town that they would provide, they would provide him a copy. So if he didn't get it, um, I don't know why. The, and on this point about the record being supplemented with correspondence that, that occurred between Mr. Prondack and Mr. Fursey, um, we would object to that. Um, it's uh, it's um, um, the written permit controls the parameters of the permit. Um, and any other comments after the decision is filed are are um, ineffective and and um, shouldn't be considered because they're out of context, um, they're hearsay, they're um, uh, and, and the a proper way to proceed is with a written decision to amend the special permit if there is to be one um, after a public hearing process by the planning board. Um, I believe this is why the, um, this board last time we met said that you would not be seeking um, to hear from the planning board about what 
they were thinking or not thinking with respect to any specific issues in in the um, in the permits that were issued. So um, I don't understand why it is that Mr. Prondack, um, notwithstanding um, that it was fairly clear from the last hearing that the board was not interested in in hearing sort of these extraneous opinions. I don't know why he went ahead and sought them anyway, but um, um, I'm, th th that, that's our position, is that it's really, it, 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 I don't have anything to add to what I just said. I think I've said it all. I, I think you've said it all. Mr. Yeah. Dunn, do you want to be briefly heard on uh, Mr. Rockman's uh, objections to uh, this uh, correspondence? Uh, which, let me identify it just for the record. Um, there was a uh, an email was sent by Mr. Prondack on September 20th, 2016 um, and, and to, to uh, Mr. Fursey, Brian Fursey, whom I believe to be the uh, chairman of the planning board. And Mr. Fursey uh, responded uh, to that email with, with his own uh, email and I, I think just for the sake of the record because everyone's being very effective uh, uh, here for this hearing um, we, we should mark that so we have it as a separate uh, Sorry, that better? Okay, that's great. So uh, we'll mark it for identification. We'll mark it for identification at the hearing here uh, so that we'll, we'll have it um, at least for identification purposes. And uh, Mr. Dunn, do you want to be heard in, in uh, opposition to uh, the Mr. No, Rutland's objections? No, just with regards to the substance of the correspondence, it reflects um, information that's already included in the record, and it's a reflection of what the bylaws... I object to this, and the point is, um, my objection is that it shouldn't be considered, and now Mr. Dunn is talking about the contents. Well, he, he really, I don't think he really is to that extent right now, Mr. Rodman. I think he's trying to, I think he was trying to suggest that, uh, that, that what is in Mr. Ferrisi's correspondence may be already in evidence, but I, that's right. that, I, I don't have a clear recollection of that, but why don't you go on, Mr. Well, that's specifically what I'm, or precisely what I'm trying to convey here, that the information is already, it can be deciphered from what's already before the board, the decisions, um, of the planning board and also the, the bylaws of the town itself. So, um, you know, I'd ask they be included in the record for you know, just for guidance, almost as a uh, as a chalk. But um, you know, their inclusion isn't necessary for the court to for the the uh, ZBA to reach the ultimate decision um, that we ask it make uh, and which is submitted in my in my memorandum. Okay, and, and you're you're aware, I believe. Uh uh, Attorney Dunn, that if, if we did take it as a chalk, a chalk isn't evidence in the case. A chalk is a manipulative, manipulative that can be helpful, but it's not technically evidence I understand in the that. case. No, okay. Understand. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me see if my board members want to be heard on this. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mullen, uh, do you want to be heard? Mr. Daber. On just this issue? On just this issue, whether, whether we should take uh, Mr. Uh, the correspondence by email from uh, Mr. Prondack and Mr. Fursey no. as evidence in the case, or just have it marked for identification purposes? <clears throat> no, I don't want to be heard. Oh, oh you don't want to be heard. Okay. <laughs> then uh, I'll make uh, the, the ruling as, as chairman. Uh, I, I think, uh, very technically speaking, it, uh, it, it is not appropriate to uh, take that as evidence in the hearing. It's after the hearing. It's a, uh, a statement by Mr. Fursey as to what uh, he believes uh, was happening between the 215 and 216 uh, uh, special permits, and uh, uh, I thought the response was a little on the ambiguous side anyway, but uh, I'm not sure how much it, uh, it helps or hurts, so that uh, uh, for the purposes of this hearing, the, uh, um, Mr. Ferrezi's comments and Mr. Uh, Prondex's email uh, will, will not be considered as evidence. So uh, with all of that having been said, uh, but I'll have that marked, Mary, at the end of the hearing. We'll just mark that correspondence as A and just put it in an envelope, if you would, please, mm -hmm. so that we'll know uh, if it's needed for later court proceedings, uh, it will be 
readily marked. Okay. So uh, with all of that having been said, it's time to <coughs> discuss this, uh, uh, the issues here in open session and uh, hopefully decide the case uh, uh, this evening. So let me see. If Mr. Mullen, do you want to be heard first? Thank you. Yeah, sure. That's great. Okay. So I have, I have, uh, we're going to talk amongst ourselves now. Yes, we are. Okay. And we're probably going to learn something from what you say, and you may be able to convince us as to uh, uh, whether your viewpoint is valid or invalid. I don't have a view yet. I have a view, okay. but I don't want to talk about my view. You I like talk to, about I want anything to talk about you want. the facts. You want to talk about the facts. I want to make sure I understand the facts of this hearing. Sure. Okay, so we're all operating on the same set of facts. Um, the commissioner in I'm, I'm sorry, could, could I stop you for one second? And, and just, uh, Mr. Dunn, uh, would, would you like to look, while, while we're discussing this, would you like to look at the submission that, uh, that Maggie Oldfield and uh, Mr. Josh Oldfield filed? And if, if it was uh, thought that it was going to be submitted to you by the board, uh, uh, I, I certainly was unaware of that, so we apologize for not getting it to you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mullen, please. So on May 25, 2016, there was a letter from the building commissioner to Thea Nursery indicating that there was a complaint about a violation of um, the 2002 special permit, let's say, let's just say. It, it references the 1967, 1987, 2002 special permit. Right, That's ha that happened, right? Okay. And um, it was from that letter that this hearing was called. So that's right. Yes, the, uh, the, old, why we're the, here. the old fields are appealing an enforcement letter of, from, of Mr. Of Prime. May 5, 9, 2016, May 25, 2016. Yes. Okay. And then, um, and this is where we got hung up last time, I think. On July 15, 2016, the planning board issued a new special permit. They did, was that which, which was approved by the attorney general. Approved by the attorney general, voted in by town meeting, consistent with the then, with the now effective bylaws of the town, right? The, well, the special I permit wasn't. The special by, permit? Wasn't voted by the attorney general. No, 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 it was oh, approved. Okay. The, 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 the change to the bylaw was. The change to the bylaw was approved, not okay. the special permit. The change permit. to the bylaw was approved okay. by didn't, the attorney general. And that change, didn't it include the special yeah. permit? Yeah. It had to. Oh, well, now we've oh, got a new special permit. Chain, right. It included a provision allowing for a special permit. Right. Yes. And that special For landscaping permit, activities. And that special yes. permit was issued by the planning board on July 15, 2016. Yeah. Yes. That's what it's stated. Right? And it's stamped yeah. into the town clerk. This is the special town meeting approved the further amendment to the, to the bylaws. That was oh. approved by the attorney general, I think, in May. Yeah. Um, Fair applied for a special permit under the amended amendment. That special permit was granted by the planning board in July. Okay. Right. So my, my only, uh, fair enough, and, and my, my, the main point I want to get it in is that it is the July 15, 2016 special permit, which is not really an important piece of information for us to have. Both, so that's the second part. And then the third point I want to make is that the both submittals that I read both concede that the 2016 permit is valid. Right? Well, it's in, it's in full force and effect. It no, would, it's, it's, it's being contested um, in the land of the uh, uh, Well, okay. So, so here's my question. Uh, are, are we here to enforce or consider the effect of the 2016, July 15, 2016 special permit as it applies to the use of the property? That's what I thought I read in the hearing, in the well, brief. Who, who we were, well, no, wait, 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 I'm second, asking the board member. Yeah, just wait a second, Matt. You come on up here and sit down, but let's, this, this is the board in deliberation, and we're not uh, yeah. going to go too far afield. You both can help us if uh, we misrecollect. But your question is posed to the board. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I know what, what we're talking about. Right, because the submissions don't really deal with that. Is that what you're saying? I, I mean, well, we, we, one of them talks a lot about the 2002 special permit, but then it says that the 2016 right. special permit is, is right. really, really the key. Right. They deal with it inferentially, yeah. but, they, but they don't take it head on. Yeah, yeah. In, my, in my viewpoint here, it's one of the principal issues is um, 
it is that 2016 special permit, which is the office <coughs> permit, uh, how it differs from the 2015 permit and whether that's of any significance, and then uh, also whether uh, the uh, 2016 special permit um, is operative under these circumstances because uh, on, on the evidence one could find that the significant mitigation provisions of that special permit uh, have not been fulfilled or completed by the applicants. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, and so the question is, if that, uh, if that has not happened, uh, does that mean the special permit uh, in, in these specific cir circumstances uh, is, is not applicable? It doesn't become effective, legally effective, as, a, as, a, as it relates to the parties here uh, until those what I'll call significant mitigation measures that are set forth in the special permit have been accomplished by the, uh, the applicant. Yeah. And it's my understanding, uh, otherwise, if that's not the case, then it's my understanding that uh, uh, Mr. Dunn contends uh, that the 2002 special permit with the restrictions, uh, as we've discussed, uh, and other decisions, Judge Wilson's decision and other decisions uh, that have been rendered, which he cites in his memorandum, are applicable, and that uh, the, the applicant, the, the Mr. Prondack's enforcement order should be upheld. And it's the position of the Thayer Nursery here uh, that uh, the 2015 special permit was adopted. 16. 16 was adopted and enacted, um, and that uh, Mr. Josh Oldfield has testified that, um, in, in his opinion, uh, these uh, mitigation measures take time, uh, they're expensive, uh, they're complicated, and that he uh, and Thea Nursery, obviously, the applicant, is working in good faith towards carrying out those mitigation measures, and as long as he's doing that, he believes that, uh, legally speaking, he has the right to conduct the uh, um, landscaping business uh, coincident with the, uh, the nursery business. I, I think that's what the essence of the dispute here is. Yeah, okay, so I have two other points. Um, on the issue of the effectiveness of the permit, I, th I think we ought, to, we ought to talk about that. To me, the permit issues, I understand it's been appealed. The permit did issue. Well, I think everything's been appealed here. I think permit the, did the issue. town meeting action has been appealed. Everything's been appealed. The permit issued. Well, it was adopted by the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the planning board. Right. And the question is, is it legally effective <coughs> or not? Well, or, or is the question, are the uses authorized by the permit? Uh, if they, they, can, they, can they be implemented uh, uh, prior to the completion of the preconditions that are set forth under its terms? I think that's, right. that's, that's really that's the fairly, issue. That's, that's, that's fairly important. That's an issue. Yeah, and that, and yeah. We're not talking about, from my perspective here, correct me if you disagree, we're not talking about um, uh, nitty-gritty issues that are dealt with in the special permit, which require a lot of different uh, items to be accomplished by uh, Thea Nursery. Uh, what we're talking about here uh, are the substantial issues of the mitigation issues yeah. and whether that permit can be uh, effective so as to allow they to conduct yeah. a landscaping business if the mitigation has not been substantially complete. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I think. This is where I am. That's exactly where I am. But I wouldn't say the special permit is not effective. That's all. Well, that may be a detail. I don't know nobody's saying that. It's I thought that's it's, what you said. No, whether it's legally, like putting, illegally effective under the circumstances of this case, that's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can, yeah. can this applicant, without completing oh. the mitigation yeah, okay. uh, elements of the special permit, which are spelled out in some detail, yeah. uh, conduct the landscaping business, or is the applicant required to maintain it, or not required, can, is the applicant restricted to doing its nursery business until it's completed? Uh, the mitigation, and Mr. Dunn would also say, and Mr. Prondek has issued uh, a certificate of occupancy for the landscaping use because it's, uh, because the uh, Thayer Nursery has now fulfilled all of the substantial requirements, the mitigation requirements of the special permit. Yeah, great. Uh, okay, so uh, that, that's helpful. Uh, uh, 
The, the, the only the question I have is a procedural one. Um, we, we've got this notice of violation uh, predating the issuance of the special permit. Is there a procedural issue with, with this hearing in that we're discussing the enforceability of a special permit when really what we're talking about is an order or, or, or have, has, has what's happened here, an order that predates the special permit? I, I, I don't want to be too technical, but I, I can see this is going to be a, I, I can see that there's going to be a lot of people looking at this in the future, and I don't want to get caught up on a procedural error here where, um, you know, th this has really been uh, superseded uh, by the issuance of the special permit, and, and it's not really been pr properly presented because what we're about to talk about is the enforceability or the application of a special permit that didn't exist on the date of the building commissioner's letter? Well, um, my, my view is that uh, it, it would be a, a tragedy for the board uh, and uh, an unfairness to the applicants here to say that we're rendering a decision based upon a uh, May 25, 2016 enforcement order of uh, Mr. Prondack, um, which, which is going to be in, in effect until July 15th, and then you're going to say, well, now the special permit is issued, and that was before Mr. Prondack's uh, um, enforcement order, and therefore, uh, what are we going to have, another hearing on that? No, I don't want to have another. I, wanna, I, I, think that, I want to just make sure we're all agreed that if we're properly joined, we're talking about the right issue, and that what happened here is simply that it's the same issues, uh, but, but we've got it presented slightly differently because there's been an intervening uh, act of the planning board that is really um, guiding us in right. and at the, considering at the, this. Right, and at the evidentiary hearing here, all of the uh, witnesses and the attorneys, I, I think, have presented their cases uh, based upon the, uh, the July 15. Uh, Special <coughs> permit. Fair enough. Yeah, so I, I don't think it does anybody a service to uh, uh, try to uh, use, a, I won't say sleight of hand, but try to avoid the direct issue here by saying, well, we'll deal with Mr. Prondack uh, for another month or two, but now we're in July and it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. I think everyone wants this uh, decided on all of the evidence we heard, and that's the basis on which the hearing took place. Should we steep, seek a stipulation to that effect, or is that not necessary? Well, uh, I, don't, I don't mind seeking a stipulation. Let me, let me just address it to, to counsel here. What we, we want to do is we want to render a decision here uh, on the merits, so to speak. Um, does, uh, and, and we don't want uh, a, prote a, a technical infirmity to somehow bring everyone back here again and cost everyone a, a fortune. Does, does anyone, any of the attorneys want to be heard as to whether... Uh, um, we should be restricting ourselves to just the time preceding the enforcement order, uh, and we should not be considering the special permit, or that we should be considering the special permit, and everyone wants to stipulate to that. We would stipulate to that. Okay. What I'd like to point out is that the, the special permit only impacts Mr. Prondack's um, May order. Uh, if the board finds that there can Im immediately get engage in the uses that were sanctioned under the special permit without having to comply with the requirements that are set forth in the in the amendment and in the special permit and obtain an occupancy permit. But, uh, but you need that special permit in evidence in order to make that argument, don't you? The special permit, in our argument, is completely irrelevant as to what there can and cannot do without the requirements that are set forth I guess, in the permit itself or in the, in the amendment. Right. right. But you, don't you want the special permit here to be part of the, the case, part of the evidence, and part of the rationale one way or the other in how we decide this case? Yes, it, I, I think that that's, that's fine. Um, you know, I also agree with the board in that I think we're, the interested parties are here right now. This is certainly a, a, a live issue that is... 100% going to come back before the ZBA if it's not addressed tonight, um, and that it just makes sense to uh, consider the impact of the special permit on what activities there can and cannot do uh, on the site 
um, you know, if you want to limit that to um, to the issue addressed in Mr. Prondack's um, uh, order, uh, I think that that'll have some uh, precedential value um, with regards to um, if the board wants to limit it to that and um, doesn't want to expand um, the interpretation of, of what can and cannot be done there. Yeah, that wasn't what I, what, that wasn't my intention. My intention was to really make it a little bit more clear, which is really about the operation of the 2016 special permit, which I, I, I think is the issue. I do too. Yeah. So, Ken, do you want to be here? <clears throat> you following that? Yeah, I think that a determination as to does there need to comply with the requirements of the special permit first before it engages yeah, in I mean, any activities? This is or? just one issue. Right. Yeah, and, and there's, a, there's, a, okay. there's a, yeah. a scope of issues that are out there. That so you're, you're basically saying that the scope of the hearing and, and our consideration should go beyond these two cease and desist or whatever orders in well, here. Not, one of, not, one of which yet. has to do with well, hours. Not necessarily, but... Uh, well, okay, so... We're, we're not going to try out what should be heard by the planning board. But we, we're here to on an appeal of that enforcement right. order. Right. And as part of that appeal, uh, the suggestion is being made, and I thought it was the basis in which the case was tried, that uh, the significance of that 2002 special permit in Mr. Prondack's decision um, requires us uh, to look at the 2016 special permit and, and see whether that supersedes the 2002 order of Mr. Uh, special permit of the board and we can consider it as, as part of that. I'm not going to open up the hearing to all kinds of issues uh, that, uh, that may be involved in the operation of Thea Nursery. We have two issues set forth in Mr. Prondack's enforcement letter. That's all we want to decide. That's exactly right. Mr. Prondack didn't come out on May 25th and say, you're operating your business and you haven't completed your mitigation activities shut down. He didn't write a letter that said that. We appealed the letter that he wrote, which is 8 a.m. and operating vehicles backwards and forwards. So the issues that we're appealing are the issues before the board, and the questions control all the way through. Right. And the question then becomes, um, is that enforceable in light of the 2016 permit that issued in July, and then the, the question that you seem to be hovering around because it's been raised is, does that permit mean that you can't operate your business until you've completed all of those things? Is that an issue before the board at all? Um, well, we're talking about the landscaping portion yeah, of the business. The landscape, so our, our position is, and we put it in our statement, is it becomes, it becomes effective immediately the, the recipient of the permit, the beneficiary of the, of the permit, can act at its own risk immediately. The building commissioner can come out and enforce it immediately, and which the building commissioner has not done on any issues that, that have to do with mitigation. And if he does that, um, the, then FAIR has an opportunity to cure to appeal, a hearing, and so forth. So the issue is, what's the effect of this permit, um, given that we're all agreeing that a substantial portion, but not all of the work has been done? And we stated in our <laughs> statement that we've, that we've made an effort, that the Thayer has made an effort to meet with Mr. Prondack on the scheduling a, 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 on multiple occasions, that's in our written statement, which I know you all have read. Right. It, seem, it seems to me that the, the, the notice of Mr. Prondack, his enforcement order, deals with the lack of the filing of a forward-only traffic patent. And so that, that's one issue. And the start time. And the start time. And the start time. Now, the start time differs from the special permit start time. So we, we've got to make a determination as to whether the special permit, it, with respect to the start time, certainly is effective or, 
are not effective. This is why I asked the question. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Okay. And again, as our as our, our statement, is, we're saying, you know, what is the status of the 2002 permit as well? And I think I addressed that as yes. so, it's not it's not just that it's superseded, it's that it never became effective. Right. So one of my questions that I was going to ask was, let's say the. July, just let's say we don't discuss for purposes of that issue, the starting time, the July 2016 permit. What is the state of the uh, law or the applicable regulations or special permits or whatever as to when they can start? Given, given the argument that under the prior statute, and I think that's what you're saying, um, there, it was basically, you didn't have to seek a stay if, if there was an appeal of a special permit. Um, the special permit in 2002 never became effective. That's what his argument is. And, 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 and that's the basis upon which I think the order was made that they couldn't start until 8 o'clock. Right. So the question is if that legal argument is effective and, and without regard to the July 2016 special permit, when would they be able to start? I yeah. guess that's. That, that might have been true on May 25, but on today, it, 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 this issue has been permit. This, issue, this permit has right. been issued. And this permit has some preconditions in it. So my concern is that we're being asked to resolve and to address two issues. Right. that were addressed prior to the issuance of the 2016, <laughs> which don't really go to the, mid, the, the precondition mitigation that's required in this permit. And I'm not quite sure it's properly presented. So I don't think we want to talk about these two issues. It's, all ba well, it's the whole basis of the no, enforcement order. No, How it's, can you it's, not talk the, about no, the because, because, because in, because in July, the planning board issued a new permit. Right, and the question is, does how, how, if at all, does that uh, July, the 2016 special permit affect these well, issues, I if, would, if at all? That's, that's what we're here to discuss and, and vote on. Mr. Prondek has issued an enforcement order, and we're supposed to vote on whether to support that enforcement order or overturn the It seems to me that the, uh, the, the pre... The, uh, the and I should say, Jeffrey, it's just so everyone understands it, it's my understanding of the law that to enforce Mr. Prondack's uh, enforcement order of uh, May 25, 2016, you need a unanimous vote of this board. Okay. To overturn it. Uh, to, well, to, no, I don't think to overturn him. I, I, I think there's an appeal here that this is not valid. And, and I, I think that uh, I thought you needed, and I still think you need, a unanimous vote of the board right. supporting Mr. Prondek's uh, enforcement order. But for whatever reason, for whatever reason. If, if I could give some clarity to the, sure. to the board. When these parties are before the ZBA or the planning board, there are two inevitable arguments that get risen, arisen by FAIR um, in each proceeding that have been addressed on numerous occasions. <coughs> One is that there is subject to some type of agricultural exemption under the Dover Amendment. Okay. That has been addressed ad nauseum to this board by myself and is a subject of numerous decisions by the ZBA. Right. The second issue that arises is the one that we're discussing again here tonight, and that is the effectiveness of the 2002 special permit that issued against Thayer Nursery, that Thayer Nursery appealed, that Thayer Nursery never obtained a stay or an injunction of that decision. It is my understanding that we have come down on several occasions that that means that the decision was never uh, it stayed, that it is the law of the land, and I believe there's some, some um, sites in my memo um, that address that, um, that it is what is in effect. And so therefore, the only possible way that there can engage in the use of the Bobcats prior to 8 a.m. is if the special permit that issued in July of, of 2015 immediately becomes effective, therefore allowing it under the terms of the special permit to allow there to operate the Bobcats at different hours than those that were set forth in the ZBA's decision of 2002. So the issue before this board 
is whether that special permit goes into effect without the mitigation, without the remediation, and without an occupancy permit that's provided for in the bylaws itself. So, so, so I mean, you can, you can muddy this as, as, as we've much as you want, but it's, it's, that's, it's, that's it's clear cut is, right. is the nose on my face. That's the issue. And so if, if it's not, if the special permit immediately goes into effect, and that's the, the board's opinion, then that's the board's opinion, and Thayer can operate immediately, I suppose, and it can, it can engage in those that's, activities. That's not the issue I'm talking about. That, that, we've already talked about that. Okay, let me, let me, say, one, let me say one thing, just, just so it's absolutely clear, because I, I did spend some time to look at this, and I may have misstated uh, exactly what I looked up. Um, we have Mr. Prondek's zoning enforcement letter. To overturn his decision, a unanimous vote is required of the permit granting authority. So if, we're, if, if Mr. Prondack's enforcement letter is going to be overturned, you need a unanimous vote of this board. And so if, if I said something that varied from that, I apologize, because that's, that's not what I meant to say. But Mr. Mr. Mullen, what? Yeah, I have a different issue. There's two permit granting authorities here. This letter was issued under a Board of Appeals issued Perm, special permit. Yes, it was. And we're being asked to make a ruling on that. We are the permit granting authority and we're the decision maker. And in, in the meantime, we've got a 2016 permit, which I think was validly issued. And I think the, uh, uh, I think Thea says in their papers that it was. And I agree with Mr. Dunn that the real issue that's in front of, that should be in front of us, but I'm not sure it really is, is whether or not the preconditions of the permit are necessary to be complied with before the use is under the well, permit. Why isn't that before us? Because we've got to deal with this May 25 letter. Right, but it's the, fe the effect of the special permit here, which we have in evidence, on Mr. Prondack's letter. Fine. That, I don't... That's, the, that's the law we're applying. Now we're not going to go, by, go back and apply previous law. Um, I, I understand it wasn't adopted when Mr. Brondack wrote but this. I agree. So I agree. But I, I thought we had objection from the parties on, on doing that. And no, I thought both parties agreed to consider, agreed. consider yeah. the 2000. So the only issue that we're really permit. talking about then is, is the, 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 the disregard. The, the, it's not going to be limited to the preconditions in this letter. It's going to be discussed. It's, it's going to be limited to the to the enforcement issues, the two enforcement issues that Mr. Prondack wrote about. Mm -hmm. He didn't write. He didn't do a tour of the nursery and, and come up with a compendium of issues to be decided uh, or to have evidence on as a result of the 2016 special permit. He went out there and he said that the 2002 special permit required you to file a forward action traffic plan, and they didn't do it, and your hours of operation, you're starting at 7 o'clock rather than 8 o'clock. Those are the two issues that are before us. None of these other issues are before us. Most of these other issues probably should be resolved at the, at the planning board level and, and not here. But all we're doing, we have jurisdiction of this because we're the Board of Appeals, and the statute says that these issues are before us when there's an appeal of Mr. Frondex and Forstner. That's all we're doing with those two issues. <coughs> we're not going to go beyond that. We're enforcing this permit. Well, we have the authority to enforce this permit. Right. Well, if it's a bylaw and it's been the no. Attorney General's office said that that's... Uh, yeah, no, under the no it's, it's, it's under the bylaw. Yeah, we're, under the, the we're the enforcer of the Planning Board Special Permit. <coughs> yes, uh, we're, we're that's correct. procedurally yeah. properly... That's correct. All right. right. So, so the only so okay. So, so let, let me rephrase what I what I think we're doing then, John, and, and that is only dealing with the issues that are raised in this letter as they apply to the 2015 special. Plan. That's exactly right. Do you, do you agree with that, Mr. Deva? I think we should only be dealing with the enforcement because otherwise issues. we're going to have to open this hearing up. We'll be we'll be here for a hundred days. Uh, uh, I was, we haven't discussed hold, 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 all of these. They're uh, still working on the facility. They're still trying to comply with the special permit. I'm with you, but I, I, don't, I don't think it, I, I, was, I was hoping we could approach it sli slightly differently, but we, we should probably get into the discussion of the merits. How can you approach it differently that I would think be fair to the parties and be productive? Well, I, I think the authorization of the uses in the special permit is subject to the satisfaction of the preconditions in the mitigation requirement. Well, they may be. 
I think that's right. I don't see any other way to read it. I don't know, but that's uh, that's one of the issues we're going to have to decide. And uh, that's the right. losing party is going to appeal, just as yeah. the losing party appeals every one of these okay. matters. So let me just address that point because it's it's obviously prominent in in your mind. If that's okay, if I uh, it, it, as long as you're not making an argument on the merits procedurally, certainly you can address it. The the point I'm making is that the, um, the, the question you're asking is, can, when, you, when a special permit is issued with conditions, under the Streamlined Permitting Act provisions of 2006, can the beneficiary of the permit proceed at its own risk. That's what the statute says. And that's not my question. That may be now, what the statute says. Now, that's not my question. At the same time, the the town can try to enforce conditions that were not met. Mr. Prondack could write a letter dated October 5th saying you haven't complied with conditions, and then that would start procedures that would put those issues before the board. But the question is, what can happen immediately on day one after that permit is issued? Because you can't just snap your fingers and have all of these yeah. mitigation uh, 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 But you can... With the liberator, right? Yeah, we are. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And, and so the, we think that the only rational construction of the, of the, um, of the Massachusetts law that changed in 2006 and the spirit of everything that's been done here is that Thayer proceed exactly as it has been. Try to ar arrange a schedule with the town. Operate in, in, a, in, in the way that the, the special permit allows while they're moving forward on getting this work done. And if the town is not satisfied and wants to enforce that, that certain mitigation uh, measures that, um, haven't been complied with, they can do another enforcement letter, and that triggers its own set of procedures, including a right to cure, but and a right to appeal. But the but the but the basic notion of it becoming immediately effective and being able to operate at their own risk, pending um, other things happening, is indisputable. And so therefore, they can operate their business. The idea was you don't get the special permit, and then having gotten it, you shut down your business. Right, but nobody's talking nobody's about asking for nobody's that. Talking That's about overstated, with okay. due respect. Okay. The, 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 the issue is just these two issues. Yeah. That's well, all we're going to do. We're also talking about the plain language of the permit, though. We're not talking about the special permit, the Permit Extension Act of 2006. The plain language of the permit requires mitigation prior to the implementation. Where does it say prior, though? It doesn't. It's a mitigation plan. It's the whole purpose of the permit. I, I just can't read it any other way. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that aside for the procedural def uh, issues that we were talking about and deal with, the, with these issues. But, and nobody's asking for the, for the business to shut down. People are asking for the permit to be complied with. So we've conceded that the, you've conceded that the permit is effective. Now the issue is whether or not the forward-only traffic plan and the operation of the Bobcats can proceed. That's what I understand that's, that we're talking that's about. That's exactly what I'm So let's do that. Intending to do. Okay. Mr. Dunn, do you want to be this just, just very briefly. Sure. What needs to be understood is that the businesses are not allowed to operate on the property without the special permit. There's it was the, for, based on the decision of two decisions of this board in the order of Judge Wilson from the Norfolk Superior Court. That the only way that there can resume those prescribed activities is if it gets a special permit and our argument is it implements the, the uh, mitigation and remediation that's called for in the permit itself and thereby thereafter applies uh, well, I, I understand that, that I understand. that's 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 our I just want to make that point clear that they're not allowed to they're not allowed to do any of this stuff without the special permit it's not that they're they can uh, they can undertake their business they can't do it on the property right now as a matter of law Okay. They would be in contempt but, but, of court if they did that. Then, then, if that were the case, then you have your remedy, do you not, to uh, bring a sure I do. petition for Absolutely I contempt do, yes. before Judge uh, Paul Wilson and have him fight that out. 
just not, like my brother has the right to make this argument about whether he can operate at his own risk under you right. know, the, the amendment to the, uh, to right. the, the zoning but, act. But my, my concern with, with these respective positions is we're not a super legislative board here. We decide issues that are brought to us. The only issues brought to us here uh, are Mr. Prondex's two issues, uh, dealing with the, uh, the plan, the traffic plan, and the hours. Now, Mr. Prondex did not tell Thayer Nursery to cease and desist from its landscaping business. He already did that. He well, already, he, he already that, issued that order. Well, he, he may have, but that, that's... You take that up with Judge Wilson, whom I have great respect for. I, I did, that, and that's, that's what the subject of right. the, the, well, the, then you, then you the should, injunction is. Then you should enforce that, if, if you want, before Judge Wilson. What, what, we're the Board of Appeals here dealing with this particular letter of the <coughs> conduct, and, and we're, that's what we're going to decide. I understand that, but you, you can't be done in a vacuum. You have it's to understand what the background facts are, which is why I provided them to, the, to this board. Yes. And, that, and that the starting, the jump-off point here is that those commercial activities are not allowed at all on the I, property. I, I, I understand that. Okay. I understand that. Okay. Mr. Mullins, do you want to? No, I'm ready to talk. You're, okay. You're ready to talk. Okay. Do you have any other procedural issues you want to discuss, Mr. Daber? Are you ready to talk as well? I, I guess because some of the time periods in the, uh, and, and, you know, there, there, there is a, category in here dealing with uh, loading of plant and nursery materials and not just landscaping, you know, for time to operate equipment and whatnot. I, I would be interested in knowing whether or not it's a, it's a, well, I guess it's not a procedural issue, that's a merits issue, okay. whether or not, whether or not the, the uh, 2002 permit under the statute that was in effect at that point uh, never did come into effect, special permit. I know we've talked about you can't have a stay, but it depends upon what the nature of the language was, because the nature of the language in the new statute, um, you know, has some language in it which, but for the fact that the person can proceed at their own risk, it seems to me would, um, you know, might argue that. Um, why, why, isn't the, why isn't the evidence reflecting that they did proceed at their own risk and, and uh, for, for whatever reason, you know, for unpronounced, unpronounced to us for years, uh, don't, don't take this the wrong way, Mr. Oldfield or Ms. Ms. Maggie Oldfield, that they've gotten away with it because nobody's asked them to uh, stop working before 8 o'clock. Nobody's tried right. to enforce that. Well, here it is. Mr. Mr. Brondack has written his letter, and that's what we're, we're dealing with here. Uh, I guess they, you could say they did proceed at their own risk, but nobody called them on it. Proceeded with their own risk under what? Right, by because operating uh, 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 at, uh, forget what the landscaping business and Judge Wilson's and, uh, yeah, order. Okay. But well, they, they, by starting at 7 o'clock, uh, Mr. Oldfield told us they started at 7 o'clock because of competitive reasons in the marketplace and uh, everyone else is start, starting at 7 o'clock. Right. He really didn't directly address the forward only traffic plan, but I think he said they were doing that as part of the special. The 2016 special but permit. That's, that's kind of begs the, my question. Maybe we should just get to the discussion. That kind of, still kind of begs my question about the uh, 2002 special permit, because that's where the seven o'clock, or the eight o'clock time rather comes so from. That's where the eight o'clock. That, right. That's exactly right. So if it didn't come into effect, then what's the basis to argue? What was the basis to argue that in May? I guess is what I'm saying. The legal basis. Right. Well, that's why I'm, yeah. I, I think we should go on, let's discuss these issues and let's vote on it. No matter, we, we, we can, we're not the Supreme Judicial Court or we're, the we're acting court, like it. And, or the land court. We should be. Well, maybe, maybe we should be, but maybe someday we will. Be. I don't think I could take it. You, you, we uh, just missed a whole bunch of opportunities. Well, I guess, I guess we did. But it just, it just seems to me here that no matter what we decide, and we're going to decide this, in my view, in good faith, one way or the other. Every, somebody's going to disagree with what we do, no matter what the situation is, and it's then going to be resolved by, by a court. Now okay. we can do this. <coughs>
Okay, so we should want, let's talk about the um, forward-only traffic plan and the hours of operation. Yes. Uh, can we, can we uh, talk about whether or not the the uh, the, the, the complaint is a uh, connection with the landscaping business or the nursery? And, and, and that's going to be important, right? What, what's the complaint? You mean the enforcement yeah, letter the enforcement of Mr. Brandeck? Yeah, yeah. Because the, uh, the, the, the permit, the special, the 2015 special permit, 2016 16 special permit, really addresses the landscaping business, right? That's what this is about. Is that right? Well, I, I'm not so sure of that. I mean, I, I can't say. I've, I've read it. It, it, was, it was enacted substantially to deal with. Time chart deals, deals with the uh, nursery, too. No, yeah. I know, but. Oh, oh, not, not because oh, okay. The, the, the planning, not sold as part of the landscaping business, yeah. The planning okay. board is essentially saying okay. that we're going to allow, because of the town meeting vote, yeah. uh, a landscaping and a nursery business to take place yeah. on the same location. And, and the planning board uh, has, has said mm. in, in its special permit that it believes that with the specific mitigation measures set forth in the 2016 special permit, they think the degree of noise, dust, and uh, disruption of neighboring properties is actually going to be less with the construction business, the landscaping business, and the nursery operating at the same time on the same property. You follow these mitigation uh, steps that are, that are in our 2016 special permit. Uh, they believe that the effect on the neighbors will be less than previously. Um, I, I don't know what, uh, <laughs> on what they base that, but they do have a lot of uh, specific conditions. And uh, it, it does. It addresses the nursery business and the landscaping business. But I, I, I do think that the, uh, Mr. Prondack's uh, letter, and I think that it is geared towards uh, the, the effect of the landscaping business on the neighboring properties okay. and, and not, the, not the nursery. And that's what I think we're addressing here. So the reason why I think the mitigation is required is that the letter, the permit specifically says the improvements and operational changes are designed to address conditions that will be present as a result of the operations of the landscaping business and include the elements below, one through five, right? That's on, on page 12. But I don't see in the special permit the requirement for a forward-only traffic plan. Do you see that? There's something in there that I yeah. did read that related to um, having the bobcats uh, with mufflers, some new type of muffler, to, and also to try to uh, uh, cut the noise for the, so whole series. Yeah, the backing up business shouldn't be taking place yeah. because all so the So a whole babies. series of them in, in, on yes. page 15. Disarm the... Uh, yeah. So I, I think it, it does deal with both of the issues. Okay. To the extent legally possible, backup alarms on bobcats and trucks will be deactivated or set at the lowest sound level possible. That's not a traffic plan, but it. But it's. Yeah. What page is that? Ted? Seven. That's, uh, Fifteen. That's Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's item seven. Oh okay. seven. I'm sorry. You finished? Yes, sir. So. If, <laughs> If you've reached a conclusion, I, I, I have to f say I forgive, forgive me, but I, I missed it. What, 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 what do you conclude? I think that by the terms of the special permit, it's pretty clear that the, re the mitigation that's at the top of page 12 yep. needs to be completed before landscaping business activities may be implemented, and that two of those, two of those uh, requirements are listed in this enforcement order of uh, addressing the uh, traffic plan with respect to the Bobcats and the operation of the Bobcats prior to 8 a.m. I think that's what it says. Okay. I, I think if I may just point one thing out, it'll take us it'll take about 30 seconds. Well, but we're, we're deliberating now. I think that, that's all right. It's, a, it's significant. In the 2015 permit, 
the 2015 permit, there was language. The applicant may begin landscaping business operations set forth below only after the required mitigation set forth below has been completed. There is no such sentence in the 2016 permit. Right. I know that. Oh, well, we, we understand you. that. So if, if I may, that sure. um, there is actually a stay, um, an injunction against the applicability of that special permit that was issued by Judge Shire in the land court. So that thing, that, that, the 2015, the 2015 has absolutely no effect no, just whatsoever on these proceedings. I'm pointing out that the language. I, I, we know we that. We, we've talked about no, we that. I, do respect. I, I, I think the absence of that language is, is significantly mitigated by the very clear sentence at the top of page 12 that says that these specific conditions are required to address the very issues that the planning board thought would be present because of the operation of the landscaping business. I'm not sure I can read it any other way. And it's a very limited number of activities um, that, uh, that, that, that need to be complied with. I, th I think that's a fair reading of the, of the requirements. And, it, and I think it's, I mean, it's entitled to mitigation. It specifically says that they're designed to address the conditions. And if, we, if they weren't to be addressed prior to the implementation of the uses, when were they to be addressed? I mean, it really, really leaves that question out there. That I think, uh, I think is a significant issue for us. If we, if we didn't, if we read, if we, if we, if you tried to read it in the alternative, so that's kind of point one. And then point two is, with respect to the issue that's been raised by the building commissioner, you know, I think you have to read paragraph one a little bit creatively, just because of the new language in the 2016 permit, like we just said, the mufflers and the other things that are on page 15. Um, uh, but, but I guess the, 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 the totality of that is that there are certain limitations that are placed on the use of the, of the, of the traffic as set forth on, uh, in the rules. Uh, and there certainly are hours of operation limitations that are in the permit as, as well. Which you're saying didn't, haven't come into effect yet because the... Well, I think they're effective. I just think they can't be used because the preconditions okay, haven't been satisfied. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, Mr. Dave. Yeah. I really have to agree with uh, Jeff's reading of the special permit, and I and I have a lot of the language highlighted. Um, and I, I apologize if he read some of it, but. Um, it's the intent of the planning board to combine nursery and landscaping business operations under the terms under the terms and conditions herein specified will result in an overall improvement of the conditions at the premises. Um, planning board therefore finds that the landscaping business use subject to appropriate terms and conditions will not cause substantial detriment to the neighborhood. The finding of no substantial detriment is a you know, as a necessary finding to, to the special permit. And um, it says that that finding is subject to the appropriate terms and conditions. And I read that as meaning, you know, subject to the mitigation measures being in effect. Because I, I, I can't see any other way it would make sense either. Um, and um, <clears throat> this, the language further on down, this is on page 22, uh, these standards including the specific <coughs> standards requirements imposed by zoning and subsection N will be met if, if there is strict compliance with the terms, conditions, limitations, and requirements specialized in this special permit. Um, no material changes to operations without amendment of the special permit. So I, I without, you know, reading, uh, few more sentences and paragraphs, I, I, I read it overall as um, indicating that these, particularly maybe not every little uh, provision and condition in here, but certainly the material ones that, that deal with noise, odor, and uh, uh, what's the third one? Dust. Dust. Um, really need to be in effect um, for the use to take place under the special permit. And uh, I, I would agree with um, Jeff's uh, uh, application of that to the, um, 
to the two issues that were raised in the enforcement one. Let me tell you how I look at this. Uh, I think we have to look at this in a narrow and limited way, uh, which I think the board is doing. Um, to me, looking at the special permit, uh, it, it dealt with five or six significant mitigation issues. One was drainage, and we know from previous cases that, uh, uh, that there were drainage issues uh, at uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Henning and Mr. Rowe's residence as a result of the operation of the, uh, the nursery and maybe the landscaping business. The fence with sound attenuating materials uh, with landscaping on both sides of the fence, uh, Mr. Oldfield told us he was working on that. I don't know whether it's been finished or, or not. Uh, certain operational changes to reduce noise. Uh, requirements regarding the storage and loading and unloading of vehicles. I think there were rubber mats involved somewhere here dealing with firewood and all of that. And the prevention of light spillover on nearby properties. And the, the evidence is that, that they are working on that type of issue, but they haven't completed those issues. I think the evidence is clear that, um, that Mr. Farndeck has not issued a certificate of occupancy to uh, Thea Nursery under the uh, uh, special permit. And as, uh, as Mr. Rotman has, has, has indicated, this 2016 special permit for uh, reasons unknown to me uh, have no phased scheduling for these mitigation issues. Um, I actually believe that it would be, be it would be better for their nursery if, if they did have a phased uh, uh, schedule for mitigation measures because then they'd know what they had to meet and when they had to meet it and the planning board could take them to task if they didn't do it. But uh, that was removed for reasons unknown and uh, Mr. Rotman's entirely right that the 2016 special permit has no phased schedule for mitigation measures. Uh, so that there on the evidence before us is conducting a landscaping business on the site, whether that's in violation of Judge Wilson's order or not, I'm not going to address that, uh, while working on mitigation. And, and that, that's, that's all we know at the present time. So what we have to do is look at the, the special permit. And when I look at it, and I'm not going to read the same language that, uh, uh, that Ted and Jeffrey have read, um, the whole purpose of the special permit is to have this landscaping business use coincident with the nursery use to be conducted in such a manner that it will not cause substantial detriment to the neighborhood or to the intent of the bylaw. And, and this special permit uh, goes so far to say that it's the intent of the planning board that the combined nursery and landscaping business operations under the terms and conditions herein specified will result in an overall improvement of the conditions of the premises. So that they seem to think, the planning board seems to think if you, if you complete these mitigation efforts that the ad, adverse effect on the neighborhood running two businesses, the nursery business and the landscaping business will be less. Uh, that kind of astounds me, but it, uh, that's a finding for the planning board to make and not, not for me to make. I didn't write this. Uh, special permit, but it says that the intention of the planning board is there be less dust, odor, and noise than would result under nursery operations alone uh, as long as the various specifics of the uh, mitigation are, uh, are complied with. So uh, from, from my perspective here, uh, we're, we're dealing with the two issues, the traffic plan and the starting time. Um, and we have this situation where the particular property itself uh, has been operating, not complying with the special permit of 2002, 
for, for years, but I, I don't think you can hold that against uh, uh, the neighbors. Um, if, if the major issues, the fence, the lighting, the landscaping, and the noise reduction measures have not gone into effect, I, I think Mr. Rotman is probably right. They, they can do this at their own risk, but, but they should be shut down doing this. It's not part, or it's not authorized in my view. But that's, that's not our decision here. We're not, we're not supposed to be enforcing uh, all of the conditions relating to Thayer Nursery. We're supposed to be looking at the two issues raised by Mr. Prondack. Uh, and on those two issues, uh, I think the special permit with respect to starting time, the 2016 special permit, uh, I think is, is not applicable to start the landscaping business at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I think our special permit of 2002 is still in full force and effect until the court says otherwise. And, and I don't think the special permit, uh, without the mitigation measures being in effect, should be able to, they should be able to operate the uh, landscaping business at 7 o'clock in the morning. They shouldn't. And I think they should be required to, uh, uh, to file either the type of uh, uh, traffic mitigation plan that Mr. Prondack requested. I, I think they, they could do that in, in two hours. That's not a big deal. It's very easy. Maybe they've actually complied with that in, in a sense, dealing with uh, um, maybe the planning board and, and how the planning board wanted things done. Uh, and that's up to Mr. Prondack, whether he thinks your traffic mitigation plan is proper or not proper. Uh, but uh, on the simple issue here from, from my viewpoint is on the two issues here, dealing with the landscaping business in particular, uh, does this uh, special permit somehow become effective regarding the landscaping business? I say it doesn't because there are major mitigation steps that have to be completed. Uh, they, they have to be presumably uh, completed to the satisfaction of the planning <coughs> board and, and maybe uh, Mr. Prondack. And Mr. Prondack has to issue a, uh, a, a certificate of occupancy. None of that has happened. So uh, my view is that I would, uh, I would not vote uh, to uh, overturn Mr. Prondack's enforcement offer, or uh, enforcement letter. Uh, in, in fact, I would, I would vote to support that enforcement letter and leave it to the applicant, uh, the planning board, and Mr. Prondack to uh, take whatever actions they need with respect to the compliance with the most important, the substan I'm not talking about nitty gritty terms, I'm talking about the substantial mitigation that's called for under the, the bylaw. And to let, let the planning board deal with the applicant and uh, see if that can be done, if it, uh, uh, but, but I, I really, I think on the two issues here, uh, my view is the, enforce, the enforcement action by Mr. Prondack was proper. Uh, it was very limited and it was restricted. Uh, but I, I actually don't think, uh, looking at the broader picture, uh, that any of the uh, salutary language contained in the special permit of the planning board uh, dealing with the mitigation of the effects of the landscaping <coughs> business on the neighbors uh, can be considered effective under any standards if the major mitigation efforts have not been completed. That's, that's my view of this. Um, but I think we address this narrowly and specifically, and those are the issues before us. And so I, I, would, uh, I would ask the board uh, um, if there's anybody, if, if there's more discussion, I'd love to hear it, but I think we come down to the issue of whether there's any board member that wants to vote to overturn Mr. Uh, Prondack's uh, enforcement order. I'd, can... I'd like, if I may, just to say two things. Sure. Uh, first, I think that the, um, all the members of the board, th I want to thank you all for, for putting the time and effort in to um, addressing these issues. Um, I respectfully, think that you have totally ignored the 
meaning of the 2006 statute that made the uh, permit effective to be operate to be acted upon immediately by the applicant while issues are being other issues might be contested this allows an operation of a landscaping business with mitigation they're proceeding and that all of that takes effect immediately so that's number one but the other thing that I had not heard from any of you is on what basis was the um, 2002 permit which is being relied upon by Mr. Prondack effective if under the under the statute that governed it it is not effective unless those conditions are met which means a certif certification that it is not under appeal and, and recording of the decision. That has never happened. The 2002 permit has never gone into effect and there's no prohibition. Uh, with the, 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 the very provision that Mr. Prondack is relying upon is not something that can be relied upon under the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, look at your uh, separate from the 2016 issue. I think that uh, I think that Thayer's position can be sustained on on either or both issues, and um, equally important is this: it is not effective. The 2002 permit is not effective, and I don't think that's been addressed. Can I can I address that? Sure. There's no bobcats supposed to, that are supposed to be allowed on that site at all. Okay, regardless of the 2002 amendment, the 2013 decision by this board in September said there is no bobcats that to be used in connection with the landscaping business. So this is irrelevant um, with regards to it, the operation of the bobcats in connection with the, with the landscaping business because they're not supposed to be there at all. That's all. So let, let me, I'm sorry, do you want to be heard? Well, I just, just, I know that Maggie was making a point. I don't think it got heard, but I think the point you were making, Maggie, was that about the bobcats. So I, I um, well, I'm sorry. No, Mr. Rockman, if you want to address the bob, you want to talk with Mrs. Uh, okay. No, I think her. I don't. Point th we don't want to go there. I, I think yeah. her point is the bobcats are not being used in conjunction with the land. This sounds like evidence to me. I think that's evidence. Okay. Yeah. It's for the nur it's for the nursery business. The bobcats that they use in their landscaping are used off site. On the, on the on the properties where they're where they're doing work that requires a bobcat. I understand, Mr. Mullen. Do you want to be heard? Um, so I, I had a comment for you, but uh, just on, on on the point about the uh, 2006 statute, we're not really talking about the 2006 statute as much as we're talking about the plain language of the permit. Right. And it doesn't seem to me like you can pick your provisions. I think the planning board was pretty clear, actually, the totality. And in fact, I agree with you, John, about it would have been much easier if there were a phase schedule, but there's not. So it'd be and fairer the, to the applicant. The only way to read it, the only fair way to read it, I think, is their preconditions. So, so you, you, can, you can have your law, you, you can't, you're not entitled to your own facts, right? So I think that that's, that's what the, those are the facts of this permit, which is what we're talking about. In terms of the, um, in terms of your discussion, John, the, the, I had two points. One is the permit itself makes this enforceable by this board, not by the planning board. So to the extent there's a complaint, I think it's coming back here. Um, and, and that's the way I read um, paragraph 11D. I think that's consistent with the bylaw, too. So it, it's not perfectly <coughs> written because it only says we may revoke it. It doesn't say amend with conditions or enforce it, but I think, it's in, I think it means that we have to enforce it. Um, and, and I know that's a little bit different, but I, th I think that's I'm, not, I'm not sure that's true. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe we should talk about how that works because I don't think it's before us. So why are we going no, to talk no, about No, no, I know, but that, that was something we were talking about about in terms of where you know procedurally where this may lie. And I, I've been thinking that I thought the whole tenor of this special permit was to take all of these issues and put them within the jurisdiction of the planning board. That, that was um, the, the, the original bylaw that was approved in 2014 actually went to the jurisdiction of the planning board, but when they um, 
did the amendment for the special town meeting in February of 2016, the planning board recognized their um, uh, the error in the writing and they didn't want to be the enforcement authority. So one of the um, corrective language at the February 2016 was to put it back in front of you, the zoning board, as the enforcement authority. Thank you, Mr. Planning Board. So it doesn't, um, I, I, I just, oh, right, but, okay. but more, just to your point about, um, about the, the specific uh, point you were making, uh, so we, we've, we've talked about the preconditions and now we're talking about the specifics. In terms of, um, in terms of the specifics, are, are you actually saying that uh, we're, we're, we're going to require the preparation of a forward-only traffic plan? Or are you suggesting a, well, uh, a I, traffic plan uh, consistent with the 2016 permit requirements? I think that I think that's true, and they may have satisfied that. We just yeah. don't have evidence yeah. of that, and that's up to Mr. You, you uh, see the difference? No one does. Yeah. So, uh, you see the exist. difference? No, it doesn't exist. Well, okay, I don't know whether it exists or not, but I think it's an important th fact in terms of well, how I understood what you were saying, John. I think we're all in agreement on the way that the permit works. And then I think what you said is, you would not vote to overturn Joe's letter. Right. But what you, but, but just, if I could modify that, uh, a friendly amendment, uh, by saying, uh, to the extent uh, it may, th these requirements may be modified by the 2016 permit. Well, yes, and, and, and by uh, Mr. Brundack's uh, discretion, uh, based upon whatever information that they wants to show him, that they have uh, adopted uh, a uh, forward-only plan with, with mitigation. And apparently, Mr. Oldfield back there, Josh, is nodding his head that they have. And I, think what, I think what Mr. Mullen is saying is a little bit different, which is that what Mr. Mullen is saying is on the traffic issue, is what Thayer needs to do is comply with the traffic requirements of the 2016 permit, which doesn't have a forward-only traffic plan requirement. It has other but it requirements. requirements on, yes. That's what I'm saying. I, I think that's, I think that's, that, that is what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that's the same. It's a traffic issue, but it's been modified by the planning board here. And, and some of these are traffic issues and some aren't, uh, you know, frankly. So. I, I agree with that. I yeah. agree with you that. Know? So I, I think that really the only issue before us here is uh, whether there's any one in favor <coughs> of overturning Mr. Prundex enforcement uh, letter of May 25, 2016. And I'd ask you to consider the argument about the effectiveness. Can we have a vote, please? I mean, this yeah. is some yeah. comments yeah. Been, going, yeah. that's going on. Evidence is beyond. Been please, closed. please, please. Thank you. We're being treated unfairly, Mr. Uh, we have. I understand. So I would I, I would uh, I would not so, vote to overturn. Well, let, let me. I would only mo modify the order to, to be consistent to, to the to the extent applicable, but consistent with the 2016 uh, permit. Right. Yeah. Right. So all those in favor of overturning uh, Mr. Brundack's enforcement letter of uh, uh, May 25, 2016, please say aye. All those opposed to. Aye. aye. So. Uh, three nothing to uh, to uh, support Mr. Prondack's letter, and we wish all of you the uh, a very good evening. Thank you for your uh, your patience with us. Thank you for your participation, and um, I think everyone will have fun in court. We appreciate everybody's time. I do point out that I, I I never heard any analysis at all of the issue of the effectiveness of the 2002 permit. It wasn't discussed by the board although it was necessary to the decision. Well, and that's in your opinion. We, we appreciate that's, your thoughts. That's right. right. For, the, for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Joe.